Okay, now this is a second type of classification that I'm going to discuss, classification of materials again. So we talked about crystalline amorphous structures. There we did not think what type of material it is, whether it is an amorphous metal or it is amorphous um, glass or it is clay, it can be anything. It was just amorphous, that's what we were interested. But now we are going to define the material or classify the materials based on their chemical composition, based on what they are. Okay, so these materials and specifically we are talking about engineering materials here because why do I use the term engineering materials? This, these are the materials that are used for manufacturing purposes. So materials used for manufacturing purposes, industrial manufacturing especially, they are called engineering materials. These are the materials used by engineers for making large scale structures. All right, so there are so many different types of engineering materials and even in these types you will see the last one I have written as others. So others can include various different types of materials, even in the future, some new materials will, um, you know, will become uh, important and maybe they will also come under others. But the primary classifications are as follows. The first one is metals and alloys. Metals and alloys you're going to use a lot, whether it is making a hammer or you are, um, I don't know, a lot of things you will make uh, using metals. A lot of manufacturing even today is done using metals, okay? Metals and alloys, so I put them together because what are alloys? When we mix two or more metals, so these are solid solutions of one metal into another. That Those are known as alloys. So metals and alloys are the first class of materials and interestingly, when we talk about engineering or manufacturing materials, a large number of such materials are iron based. So mainly iron and steel mainly steel and that is why because so many manufacturing materials are iron based we have completely two different classes one is ferrous ferrous means iron based huh? and non ferrous which is other than iron okay so here are some examples ferrous materials are cast iron steels of course and then there are different types of steels again we will discuss that right tool and die steel for example i have written here right now so these are ferrous materials what are non ferrous materials anything that is not iron so copper is a good example you see copper wires everywhere right and aluminum also is something that you may have seen um, if for various applications tungsten is a much stronger material you don't see titanium and tungsten in your daily um, you know daily life but there are several things especially medical devices and all which are made of more sophisticated materials sophist metals Sophisticated means um, they can withstand harsh conditions compared to iron, which would easily get rusted and so on. So these are also more expensive metals. So these are some examples of metals and alloys. I have not given the example except uh, steel, but there will be many, many alloys that we will discuss. All right. Polymers. What are polymers? Polymers are these structural, um, you know, these are long chain type structures, chain or sheet in some cases which are made of tiny units known as monomers. So this is something you already know. How do we, um, how do we segregate polymers? How do we classify polymers? So there is something known as thermoplastic polymers, something known as thermosetting polymers. Maybe you already know all these things. We will discuss the details. We'll have, you know, one lecture on just polymers, the introduction to polymers. Okay, third class is known as elastomer. Elastomer is like natural rubber. That is an elastomer. Also, there is another um, polymer known as silicone, which is used, for example, for making contact lenses. That is also an elastomer. So these are the three examples. And I have written some names. Again, if you want, you can um, do a quick internet search and find out for yourself what are these polymers and um, what are the applications of these polymers. All right. Ceramics. What is a ceramic? Hmm. So ceramic, when you think of ceramic, some white powdery things probably comes to your mind. And that is not wrong. Ceramics are typically oxides, nitrides or carbides of metals. So these are inorganic compounds. They are basically mostly they are metal based, but they are typically oxide, nitride or carbide these are some of the examples and um, or these are some of the uh, you know types and then very specific examples one example i can tell you alumina hmm. al2o3 that is one example 
of a ceramic material there are various materials we are going to discuss in the future composite material so composite i have written pmc mmc the uh, acronyms are uh, full forms are given in the bottom composite materials are basically materials which have two distinct phases what do i mean by material phases well it's not like gas liquid solid typically they are all solids but say one there they are combinations of two materials but unlike metals they are not combined at an atomic level you can very easily separate out the two things so for example if i take a cloth and then i take some kind of glue and i i take one piece of cloth and i put some glue on top of it and then i piece another piece of cloth i place another piece of cloth another glue and then cloth and so on and then i make this multi layer structure that structure is going to be very strong because it has both the properties of the cloth and also that of the glue so this is going to be a strong material and if you make some structure out of it that is going to withstand a lot of uh, you know mechanical stresses and so on now those kind of structures will be called composites so again um these are some of the examples you can do a quick internet search but composite materials in this particular course we will not go into the details our primary focus is manufacturing and man for manufacturing purposes although i am giving these examples hybrids composites and so on because otherwise the classification would not be complete but engineering materials as such are mainly metals alloys and polymers polymers you are going to learn because when you make a plastic bottle for example that is that is a, a processing of a polymer so those kind of things plastic is extrusion and so on you are going to learn okay so last slide this is where i'm going to tell you what is product realization how is it connected to manufacturing okay manufacturing i think by now you know it's about making something it's the idea of making something we use different materials and so on okay but how about product realization so what are the steps that are used in making a product okay what is a product product is something that this guy needs and who is this guy this guy is your customer okay so what the very first thing that comes you know that is important when you're making a product is the requirement of the customer customer at that time the customer is not the customer it's basically just based on your market research market survey and so on then you will figure out what people want so it's not one person who is standing in front of your shop it's just basically what people want for example um if you want a, a thinner uh, flat screen tv in the past some 20 years ago there used to be only these tvs which were very bulky right but people wanted less bulky products and this is true for most of the electronic goods people want them less bulky so they take less space if possible you can hang them onto the wall so now that is the requirement of a customer now you need to de design let's say somebody must have designed this flat screen tv and then manufactured that flat screen tv using all those requirements and all those things that we learned in the first slide that you know which material should be used which manufacturing process joining process whether we need to join not join all these decisions were made okay so first thing is customer requirement how do you know about it well mostly from market survey or you basically often you know what people want hmm. okay people always want something that is better and cheaper this is how it works right what do you do after that okay you realize that people want people are not happy with their current televisions and they want something better maybe people will give you some vague ideas and this is not good i want something better how better they, they that they don't tell you right now as an engineer what do you do you think of what is a possible product that can satisfy the demand of that customer not that customer but demand of people in general so that is where the concept of a product comes so that is called conceptualization hmm. so that is where the product concept starts okay now you came up with the idea okay we can make a flat screen tv that will be better than the existing tvs but how what should be the design what should be the dimension all of these things then you start basically working on product design and design has several steps so design the initial design is just about you know what is feasible 
in that product. But then you also think about its feasibility for industrial, uh, you know, production. Okay, as I said, that every time you need to think of, of, you know, how, what will this product look like if I want to make hundreds of them? Is it too expensive? All of these things you need to think of. So product design and industrial design have written only these two things, but there may be actually multiple steps or multiple, um, or what should I say, iterations involved in, uh, in your product design. Hmm. All right. So finally, now you designed a lot of products and you selected one. Now that is known as design optimization, right? So design and cost optimization. Finally, you come up with this one product and you make a prototype. Prototype is nothing but a small scale um, structure that you want to make, but it's much smaller scale. Okay. So you come up with your prototype and now you have decided on the design. What, what do you do after that? So you know that this is something you now learned in the beginning that you decide, decide on the materials. So material selection and also manufacturing process selection. And then what do you do? This is where you basically start your manufacturing already. When you're even thinking of which materials to use, which manufacturing process, that also comes under manufacturing. And then, of course, you need to actually make the product using those processes and materials. That is, this is where your manufacturing fits into the making of a product okay or realization of a product realization is a little bit of a fancy word basically it's all about how a product becomes real that is what you mean by realization so it's basically making a product coming up with a product hmm. okay now after that once you have the product then it's easy or not easy then you sell it and then you do the post sales services and so on that is not your concern in this course all right so this is where manufacturing fits into this product realization so again sort of summarizing this the definitions again manufacturing we discussed it in the beginning one more time all of the steps that are involved in making a product or in other words converting a raw material into a fully finished product that is manufacturing as the definition product realization what is the definition well product realization sort of is a broader term which involves not just manufacturing techniques but much more than that for example you will also there factor in the product uh, uh, the requirements of the customer you will factor in the design aspects you will factor in the cost you will also see whether or not it is feasible to make this, um, you know, at a large scale and so on. So product realization is a broad terminology. Manufacturing is a part of it. Okay, fine. So product realization technology means the technologies that we use hmm, for making a product. In other words, manufacturing processes. All right. So this is all for today's lecture. In the next lecture, we'll start with specific materials. All right.